Hi, aura is an abnormal feeling or a sensation that happens to people with epilepsy and it was described thousands of years ago in the ancient Greek uh, philosopher and uh, uh, physician Hippocrates in patients with headache and aura was formally described by the physician and philosopher in the second century Galen who described it in a 13 year old boy who had a feeling of a cold breeze throughout his leg all the way to his head during an epileptic seizure and then this is breeze means aura in Greek and that's how the aura uh, word came. So aura is a breeze first mean and now we we describe it the events before a seizure or a neurological event. In epilepsy aura is different from one person to another based on the area of the brain where it starts. So whatever the area of the brain that was involved in this aura the electricity changes there it will do whatever the function of that area will do. Do you know that auras are epileptic seizures? Yes, they are. So aura is an epileptic seizure that was with intact awareness. We call it focal seizures. Before we used to say it uh, simple partial seizures. Now we call it focal aware seizure. So it's a seizure that is small contained in one area of the brain so that you have the feeling and it did not spread to the areas of memory or awareness. So you are still be able to remember the aura or the beginning of the seizure. People say sometimes like, oh, I only have auras, don't have seizures anymore. And that is incorrect because aura are all epileptic seizures and need to be treated as such. Most of the seizures happen in the temporal lobe and auras of the temporal lobe happens mostly in the hippocampus or the memory areas. That's why auras are mostly described as deja vu or, or feeling uh, this has been familiar or this happened to me before. Sometimes people will literally have a, a, a movie scene or, or some uh, scene of their life coming back or random memories surface back in, uh, at the beginning of the seizure. And sometimes it happens in the amygdala, which is a little bit in front of the hippocampus, and the amygdala is the area of the emotion. So people can have the aura as emotional experience, fear, pleasure, happiness. Uh, and also it can be in the areas of hearing, in the Heschel's gyrus, and people can have uh, buzzing sound, musical experiences, and hearing other voices and other, and other things. Sometimes it can be a, a formal memory of vivid uh, experience, some people will see themselves in a coffin. Some people will have pe people faces in, in their face. Sometimes they will uh, feel some weird experience that they just could not uh, remember or could not describe. Sometimes auras can be this rising sensation in the stomach uh, or butter butterflies in the stomach or something coming out of the chest or out of the stomach or flat abdominal pain. So some patients have aura of abdominal pain. There was a patient, interestingly, that kept having uh, intense abdominal pain episodes, not constant, just like one few seconds, abdominal pain, abdominal pain. And then the doctors like referred the patient to the uh, stomach doctor who referred the patient to a surgeon who did what they do best, <laughs> which is doing surgery. So this is like, oh, this abdominal pain, we don't know what it is. We did all the scans, everything was normal in the abdomen. So they ended up doing uh, gallbladder removal and appendix remover, uh, cholecystectomy and appendectomy to treat that. And then that obviously did not improve. And then and finally, the patient saw us in the epilepsy center and then, oops, it was a seizure that is causing this experience to happen. And then the patient eventually had the generalized seizure, big grand mal seizure. That is why we discovered it. Outside the temporal lobe as well, auras can happen in the parietal lobe. So the parietal lobe is responsible for sensations. And some people with the aura, they will feel like tingling, numbness, or like our friend who had a cold breeze on their skin. And it can be painful sensation, it can be burning sensation, it can be something like on their on their feet or their arm, and usually auras is just a short burst of that sensation. It can happen in the frontal lobe and it can be a movement, uh, like twitching in some uh, some areas of the body, shaking in, in, in the feet, in the arm, and this is called aura, or sometimes people, because it's a movement, do, do not call it aura, I call it a focal aware seizure. And then, seizures can happen in the occipital lobe all the way in the back of the head and that will cause auras of vision like flashing lights or, or visual phenomena, bubbles, scintillating lights. It is very important to differentiate between auras for epileptic seizures and auras from migraine headache. Let's see the difference. 
Epileptic seizure is a burst of electricity that marches through the brain quickly. So usually it starts in one area and then spreads to other areas. So patients will start having those flashes of light and quickly they will start, they will pause and then they will have uh, a seizure or motor function or other symptoms. So the symptoms will be quick and then the propagation will be quick. In the other case of migraine aura, migraine is a headache condition. Auras will be slow marching. It can last up to 30 minutes or even longer and then so it's a slow process the uh, the area of vision will start to form a scintillating uh, vision and squiggly lines and flashes patients will be sensitive to light and then it is uh, followed by headache in most cases yes there are some migraine headache without an aura but most of the time it is followed by headache so that's important to differentiate between aura from migraine and aura from epileptic seizures. How can we diagnose the aura? The diagnosis of epileptic auras is the same as we work up on epileptic seizures and epilepsy. We will take good history and physical examination. We can do testing to prove that. We can do a brain MRI to see if there is like mesial timbral sclerosis or any scar or a lesion in the brain that can be the cause of seizures to happen. Also, we can perform an EEG, an electroencephalogram, a brainwave test. We put leads and wires on the head to study the brain electricity. It is important to note that aura is a, it happens from a small and sometimes deep area in the brain. And if an aura happens during the EEG recording and the EEG continues to be normal, I mean, usually it can be captured on EEG, will have the changes. And if it is normal still, that does not rule out the possibility of seizures because it's a limitation in the EEG itself. The EEG leads will only capture sources of a 10 to 20 centimeter cubic of a brain area. So quite large brain area and then the aura usually starts from like less than one centimeter cubic area so it's tiny area and it is deep so EG can miss uh, the changes in the aura and it is still considered epilepsy. Is having an aura useful? Uh, the answer is yes. Well, auras do not happen in, in most of the patients, but some patients are lucky to have auras or, or maybe not lucky, but anyway, so they, they have auras. Uh, sometimes it, it gives them a, a time to uh, get in safety uh, positions. Like if somebody's having a seizure, then they will feel an aura and then they will sit down on the ground so that they, they avoid falls on injuries. Some patients say that, well, I have aura. I know what to do. If I'm driving, then I will, I will get to safety. That's a false assumption because when you're having an aura, then your body might not be under full control and your awareness might not be uh, fully functional. Also, it does not have enough time for you to have such a reaction. We had a patient that said like, oh, I, I, my auras are very, very vivid. I, I know when I'm having a seizure and then I continue to drive and he was advised not to drive and then he did that and he did get into an accident because it was not enough time for him to get to safety, especially on the highway. So it is important not to drive if you have auras because you don't have enough time to get to safety and not to drive if you have seizures at all unless you have long time without seizures. How do we treat auras? It's important to consider that auras are epileptic seizures and they need to have medical attention and treatment the same as other types of seizures. So don't say like, oh, I only have auras, don't need be, I don't need to be treated because they can get stronger and connect to bigger networks in the brain and that causes them to have bigger seizures. So it is very important to control them. The, luckily, we treat them with with medications so most of the seizures 50 to 70 percent will respond well to medications and then there is about a third of patients 30 percent will not, not respond to medications and then we have to do some other advanced treatment like surgical treatments for epilepsy it is very important to choose the right medication for the right patient when we are selecting the medication for epilepsy it's not true that every epilepsy medication works for every patient there is an art behind the selection i will give you all the secrets of which is the best epilepsy medication for for which patient in this video that I will review all the anti-seizure medications and their properties so that we know what, what is the best medicine for you and stay healthy and see you on the next one. Salam.